Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. Eleanor of Aquitaine was born in either 1122 or 1124 to an illustrious family in what is now southwestern France. Her father, William X, Duke of Aquitaine, ruled over an extensive and prosperous territory that included much of the modern-day region of Nouvelle, Aquitaine. Eleanor's early life was shaped by the privileges of her noble birth and the expectations placed upon her as the eldest daughter of the Duke of Aquitaine. Growing up in the opulent court of her father, Eleanor was immersed in a rich cultural environment that would later play a significant role in shaping her worldview and sensibility. Her father ensured that she received an exceptional education, focusing not only on traditional subjects such as reading, writing and arithmetic, but also on music, literature and the art of courtly behaviour. Throughout her childhood, Eleanor's intelligence, wit, and beauty became widely known, drawing the attention of potential suitors from all over Europe. When her father died in 1137, while on pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela, Eleanor inherited the vast territories of Aquitaine and Poitou, making her one of the wealthiest and most influential women in Europe. It was clear that her hand in marriage would significantly alter the balance of power in medieval Europe, and a union with the French crown would have far-reaching consequences for both the French kingdom and the territories she ruled. Eleanor's marriage to Louis VII of France was the result of careful negotiation and political manoeuvring by both her father, who sought a powerful ally to protect his territories, and the French king Louis VI, who sought to expand the kingdom's influence. The young couple was married in July 1137, and they were crowned king and queen of France just a few months later, following the death of Louis VI. Although the union between Eleanor and Louis seemed promising at first, their personalities and interests diverged sharply as time went on. Eleanor was a strong-willed, independent, and intellectually curious woman who enjoyed the pleasures of life and was unafraid to challenge convention. Louis, on the other hand, was a deeply religious and pious man who was more focused on spiritual matters than on the practical aspects of ruling a kingdom. This fundamental difference in their personalities and values created a rift between them that only grew wider over time. Despite their differences, Eleanor and Louis initially sought to fulfill their roles as rulers and produce an heir to the French throne. However, their marriage was marred by a series of unfortunate events and tragedies that would serve to further strain their relationship. The death of their infant son Philip in 1139 and their subsequent inability to produce a male heir cast a shadow over their union and placed additional pressure on Eleanor as queen. The Second Crusade In 1145, Pope Eugenius III called for a new crusade to retake the Holy Land, which had recently fallen to the Muslim forces under the command of Zengi, the Atabeg of Mosul, Eager to prove his commitment to the cause, Louis VII enthusiastically embraced the call to arms, vowing to lead the French contingent of the crusade. Eleanor, sensing an opportunity to assert her own influence and power, decided to accompany her husband on the crusade. This decision was highly unusual for a queen at the time, as the crusades were seen as primarily a male endeavour, and women rarely took part in these arduous and dangerous military campaigns. As Eleanor prepared to depart for the Holy Land, she assembled a retinue of knights and nobles from her own territories, thereby asserting her autonomy and independence as a ruler in her own right. She also adopted the symbol of the cross and the motto Du et mon droit, God and my right, which would become a rallying cry for her and her followers throughout the crusade. 
The journey to the Holy Land was fraught with danger and difficulties, with the Crusaders facing numerous challenges, including harsh weather conditions, treacherous terrain, and enemy attacks. Despite these obstacles, Eleanor's presence and leadership on the Crusade earned her both admiration and criticism from her contemporaries. Some saw her as a brave and fearless queen who fought alongside her husband for a noble cause, while others viewed her actions as scandalous and unbefitting of a woman in her position. During the Crusade, Eleanor and Louis' relationship continued to deteriorate. Eleanor's independent spirit and strong personality clashed with Louis' pious and more conservative nature. The strain on their marriage was exacerbated by the political and military setbacks that the Crusade faced, as well as the growing influence of Eleanor's uncle, Raymond of Poitiers, the Prince of Antioch, who supported her ambitions and desires for greater autonomy. The End of a Marriage After the failure of the Second Crusade, Eleanor and Louis returned to France in 1149. The experience had further deepened the rift between them, and the couple began living increasingly separate lives. The absence of a male heir, which had been a source of tension throughout their marriage, became an even more pressing issue in light of the Crusade's disastrous outcome. By 1152, the relationship between Eleanor and Louis had reached a breaking point. Unable to reconcile their differences, the couple sought the annulment of their marriage on the grounds of consanguinity, a claim that they were too closely related by blood to be legally married. The annulment was granted, and Eleanor regained control of her lands in Aquitaine and Poitou. This dramatic shift in the political landscape would have significant repercussions for both the French kingdom and Eleanor's future. A new king and a new love. Eleanor's newfound freedom and vast holdings made her an attractive prospect for powerful suitors across Europe. In May 1152, just eight weeks after her annulment from Louis the Seventh, Eleanor married the ambitious and energetic Henry, Duke of Normandy, who would later become King Henry the Second of England. Their union was one of love and passion, as well as mutual ambition and desire for power. Over the course of their thirty-four-year marriage, Eleanor and Henry produced eight children, including the future kings Richard the Lionheart and John. The alliance between Eleanor's Aquitaine and the English crown resulted in the creation of the vast Angevin Empire, which would come to dominate much of Western Europe during the twelfth century. Together, Eleanor and Henry navigated the complex and often treacherous world of medieval politics, working to consolidate and expand their power through strategic alliances, military conquests, and diplomatic maneuvering. As Queen of England, Eleanor played a significant role in shaping the political, cultural, and economic landscape of her time. She was a highly capable ruler, with a keen understanding of the complexities of medieval politics and an unyielding determination to protect her interests and those of her children. Eleanor's influence was felt not only within the English court, but also throughout the courts of Europe, where she was known for her intelligence, diplomatic skill, and patronage of the arts. Eleanor also sought to strengthen her family's position through strategic marriages for her children. Her sons, Richard and John, were married to the daughters of the King of Navarre and the Count of Toulouse, respectively, while her daughters were wed to powerful European nobles, including the kings of Sicily, Castello, and Leo. These marriages served to expand the Angevin Empire's influence and create alliances with key European powers. As Eleanor's influence grew, so too did her tensions with her husband, Henry II. Their relationship was marked by a series of power struggles, disagreements, and betrayals, culminating in the infamous revolt of 1173 to 1174. In 1173, Eleanor's sons, along with many other nobles, led a rebellion against their father, Henry II. 
This revolt was fueled by various factors, including Henry's rumoured infidelity, his favouritism towards his illegitimate son, and his attempts to divide and redistribute the territories of his legitimate children. Although the exact extent of Eleanor's involvement in the revolt remains uncertain, she was suspected of providing support to her sons, offering them both advice and resources to further their cause. Eleanor's motivations for backing her sons are open to speculation, but her actions may have been driven by a desire to protect her own interests and those of her children, as well as a desire to avenge the numerous slights and betrayals she had suffered at the hands of her husband. Ultimately, the revolt failed, and Eleanor was arrested and imprisoned by her husband. For over a decade, she was held captive in various locations throughout England, including the castles of Old Sarum and Winchester. Despite her confinement, Eleanor continued to maintain correspondence with her children and allies, subtly working to maintain her influence and undermine her husband's rule whenever possible. The revolt, though unsuccessful, would have far-reaching consequences for the Angevin Empire, leading to a period of instability and infighting that would ultimately contribute to its downfall. However, for Eleanor, the ordeal would also serve to cement her reputation as a formidable queen whose fierce determination and unwavering loyalty to her family would ensure her place in history as one of the most influential and powerful women of her time. The Final Years of Henry II's Reign Despite the defeat of the revolt and Eleanor's subsequent imprisonment, the final years of Henry II's reign were marked by continued turmoil and unrest. Eleanor's sons, Richard and John, engaged in further rebellions against their father, each seeking to assert their own authority and claim a larger share of the vast Angevin territories. During these years, Eleanor's influence and resilience remained apparent as her sons continued to seek her counsel and support in their ongoing disputes with their father. She remained an active figure in the world of politics, even from her captivity, maintaining correspondence with her children, allies, and other powerful figures throughout Europe. As Henry's health began to fail, the balance of power within the Angevin Empire began to shift. In 1183, the death of their eldest surviving son, Henry the Young King, led to further strife and conflict within the family, as Richard and John fought for their father's favour and the right to inherit the throne. Eleanor's release and Richard's reign. In 1189, following Henry II's death, Eleanor was released from her imprisonment by her son, Richard the Lionheart, who ascended to the throne as King of England. Eleanor's release marked a significant turning point in her life as she once again assumed a position of power and influence within the Angevin Empire. As Queen Dowager, Eleanor played a vital role in securing Richard's position and ensuring the stability of his reign. She acted as regent during Richard's frequent absences from England, which included his participation in the Third Crusade and his subsequent capture and imprisonment by the Holy Roman Emperor Henry VI. Throughout Richard's reign, Eleanor remained a constant presence, serving as his chief advisor and confidant, and working tirelessly to maintain the fragile balance of power within the Angevin Empire. Her diplomatic skills and political acumen were instrumental in securing Richard's release from captivity in 1194, as she personally travelled to the continent to negotiate the ransom terms with the Holy Roman Emperor. The Reign of King John Upon Richard's untimely death in 1199, Eleanor once again played a crucial role in securing the succession, this time for her youngest son, John. As the newly crowned King of England, John faced a multitude of challenges, both at home and abroad, and relied heavily on his mother's wisdom and experience to help him navigate the complex world of medieval politics. Eleanor's guidance proved invaluable during the early years of John's reign, as he struggled to maintain control of the vast Angevin territories in the face of mounting external threats and internal strikes. 
Despite her advancing age, Eleanor remained active in both domestic and international politics, undertaking diplomatic missions on behalf of her son and engaging in negotiations with foreign powers to secure alliances and maintain peace. However, as John's reign continued, the relationship between mother and son began to show signs of strain, as his increasingly tyrannical rule and poor decision-making alienated both his subjects and his allies. Eleanor's influence began to wane as her once. Close relationship with her son grew more distant, and her ability to guide and advise him was undermined by his own stubbornness and intransigence. The loss of Aquitaine and the decline of the Angevin Empire. The decline of the Angevin Empire reached a tipping point in 1204, when the French king Philip II Augustus seized the strategically important region of Normandy, which had been under English control for centuries. This marked the beginning of the end for the Angevin Empire, as further losses followed in quick succession, including the key territories of Anjou, Maine, and Poitou. One of the most significant and personal losses for Eleanor was the loss of her beloved Aquitaine, the region which had been the foundation of her wealth and power for most of her life, was now under French control. Despite her age and failing health, Eleanor remained committed to defending her ancestral lands, even travelling to Aquitaine in an attempt to rally support against the French invasion. Eleanor's efforts to protect Aquitaine, however, proved futile. In 1205, the region was fully integrated into the French kingdom, marking the end of an era and the disintegration of the once mighty Angevin Empire. The loss of these territories would have profound and lasting consequences for Eleanor, her family, and the future of England and France. Eleanor's Final Years and Legacy Following the loss of Aquitaine, Eleanor's health began to decline rapidly. In 1206, she retired to the Abbey of Fontevraud, a religious community she had long supported and patronized. There, she devoted her remaining years to prayer and contemplation, occasionally corresponding with her children and offering advice when called upon. Eleanor of Aquitaine passed away on April 1, 1204, at the age of 82. Her passing marked the end of an extraordinary life that had spanned nearly a century and left an indelible mark on the history of Europe. Eleanor's legacy is one of power, resilience and defiance of convention. She remains an iconic figure, both as a powerful queen who shaped the politics and culture of medieval Europe and as a woman who refused to be constrained by the expectations and limitations of her time. Through her actions and influence, she challenged the traditional roles assigned to women and demonstrated that they too could wield power and authority in a world dominated by men. Pontevraud Abbey and Eleanor's Tomb Eleanor's final resting place is in the Abbey of Pontevraud, a testament to her lifelong connection with the religious community. Today, the Abbey is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and serves as a poignant reminder of Eleanor's lasting influence and impact. Eleanor's tomb, a simple stone effigy, lies alongside those of her husband, Henry II, and her son, Richard the Lionheart. The simplicity of the tomb belies the complexity of the woman it represents, whose life and legacy continue to inspire and captivate scholars, historians, and visitors from around the world. Eleanor's influence extended far beyond the realm of politics, as she was a passionate patron of the arts, literature, and culture. Her courts, both in Aquitaine and England, became centers of artistic and intellectual expression attracting some of the most renowned artists, poets, and scholars of the time. Eleanor's patronage contributed to the development of the troubadour tradition, a form of lyrical poetry and song that would have a lasting impact on European literature and culture. She also played a significant role in the spread of the Arthurian legends and the emergence of courtly love as a central theme in medieval literature. Her promotion of the arts and intellectual pursuits not only served to enhance her own prestige,
but also helped to foster an environment in which new ideas and forms of expression could flourish. Eleanor's Legacy in Modern Times Eleanor of Aquitaine's legacy continues to resonate in modern times. As a queen who defied convention and shaped the course of medieval Europe, her life has served as a source of inspiration for countless novels, plays, films, and scholarly works. Her story continues to captivate audiences worldwide, transcending the boundaries of time and culture. Eleanor's impact on the modern perception of medieval queenship is significant. She is often regarded as a trailblazer, a woman who refused to be defined by her gender and instead used her intelligence, cunning, and charisma to wield power in her own right. Eleanor's story has, in many ways, redefined the way in which we view the roles of women in medieval society, challenging long-held stereotypes and assumptions about their abilities and agency. Moreover, Eleanor's patronage of the arts and her promotion of intellectual pursuits serve as a testament to the power of cultural exchange and the importance of fostering creativity and innovation. Her influence on the development of literature, music, and the arts remains an enduring part of her legacy, one that continues to shape our understanding of the medieval world and the role of women within it. Eleanor of Aquitaine's captivating story has captured the imagination of artists and writers for centuries, and her presence in popular culture continues to grow. In literature, historical fiction authors such as Alison Weir, Elizabeth Chadwick, and Sharon K. Penman have explored various aspects of Eleanor's life, portraying her as a complex and multifaceted figure, navigating the challenges of her time. In film and television, Eleanor has been portrayed by some of the most talented actresses of their generations. Catherine Hepburn's iconic performance in the 1968 film The Lion in winter earned her an Academy Award and brought Eleanor's story to the forefront of popular culture. More recently, actresses such as Jolie Richardson and Susan Lynch have portrayed Eleanor in various television adaptations, highlighting her intelligence, strength, and resilience. These depictions of Eleanor in popular culture serve to underscore the enduring appeal of her story, as well as the importance of her legacy in shaping our understanding of the lives of medieval queens and the role of women in history. We hope that Eleanor's story will inspire and enlighten, reminding us of the resilience and strength of women throughout history, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. As we conclude our exploration of the life and legacy of Eleanor of Aquitaine, we invite you to join us for the next episode in our Saving Castles podcast series, Women of the Castle, the Powerful Queens. We continue to delve into the fascinating stories of the women who wielded power, defied convention, and left an indelible mark on the history of Europe and beyond. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening. 